Hey, thanks for tuning in. Video three of getting some sea dews all fixed up and back on the water. Um, today we're starting at talking about the bellows boot, the carbon ring and the floating ring, repairing and replacing those. And when I made this video and put it all together and pieced it all together, um, it became obvious I just need to include the drive shaft replacement in the same video. So I'm including that here. I know it's on the second list of laundry items repaired on these machines. Uh, but it will just be included here and I uh, hope you enjoy. Alright, so if we're going to talk about replacing the bellows, the floating ring, and the carbon ring, you'll see here, here's kind of a picture of what you're looking for. It's going to be in the bottom of the machine towards the back. You know, you access it from the engine compartment. Um, basically, you know, you've, you've got a, a rubber bellows boot that connects from the hull to the carbon ring. The carbon ring is that little bit lighter gray right after the rubber boot. And then the, the bright chrome is your floating ring. And what happens is, you know, it shows that big black arrow, you know, providing compression to that whole assembly to access that C-clip underneath the floating ring. So when in normal operation, that floating ring is covering the C-clip and this assembly together is what makes your water seal to keep the sea craft seaworthy and keep the water out of the hull. You know, there's going to be two O-rings underneath the floating ring, and then you've got um, kind of a, a little seal on the floating ring lip to the carbon ring, and then it's all held under pressure with the C-clip. To access the bellows, you're going to have to in the floating ring. You're going to have to take off the seats, remove that center support bar, you know, remove the radiator overflow tank there. You're also going to need to remove the intake hose, air intake that goes to the supercharger. You know, you can disconnect it on the supercharger and on the plastic rigid air intake pipe that runs alongside the engine. Uh, you'll also want to disconnect the hose at the throttle body um, and potentially most likely you'll need to just take out the whole darn supercharger um, which is held on by three E8 bolts one of them which you will need an E8 wrench uh, there's no other real way to get to it it's slow it's painful you can see other videos about it on YouTube and you may even have the um, supercharger seized in the engine and it'll take a, a lot of manpower to get that thing to turn and start to wiggle out of there or you might get lucky and it turns right out I, I actually had both experiences so I'm going to show you what a couple of the parts look like down there by the bellows um, you have a floating ring you have your carbon ring this one's chewed up is part of the problem of why it needed to be replaced. And you have your bellows boot. So it goes in that order. And then there's also a C-clip that holds it onto the drive shaft. This is under tension. And this seal right here is what holds your water out of the hull. So as you can see, when your carbon rings chewed up and tore up, water is going to get through there because that's not going to make a nice seal. Now I want to bring up one thing I found out. When I ordered replacement boots, um, like this is an OEM one and this is an aftermarket one. I'm adding them about the same amount of force. You can see one compresses a whole lot more than the other, the aftermarket one. And I thought that was going to be a problem. That's actually why I ordered the OEM one. I figured I was going to be in there doing it twice. Um, I've had them out four or five times now and dry as a bone, so it's okay, but you know, maybe go with the OEM if you're not 100% sure. Um, like I said, I, I've only had them out four or five times, but uh, so far so good. But I did want to point that out just so you guys don't have to deal with the same things I dealt with. So I suppose the million dollar question is, is well, how do you compress that floating ring to gain access to that C-clip? I mean, I've seen YouTube videos where people are doing it by hand. 
I've seen them using this tool shown in this picture by Bombardier. I've seen a variety of ways. Um, in the next few seconds, you're going to see some interesting ways I found to get it done. Um, but the point is, it depends on how much tension is on your boot. Um, you know, if it's an already an aftermarket one, you may be able to do it by hand. But if it's an OEM one, you're most likely going to need some leverage with a tool. When I was compressing the boot and floating ring, I, you could opt to buy the tool from Bombardier, uh, but I actually had a spare level around and it looked like this on one end and I just pulled off the plastic cap and then I cut out the end piece leaving a leg on each side coming up you know about two inches there and what you can do you can push this around the floating ring and then using a board something about half the size of this dowel you can pry it against like the engine block and using the lever arm you can compress that floating ring and get that clip out of there so what we haven't talked about is in this process of replacing the floating ring and carbon seal um, you have to take out the pump, you know, you've got to take out the four bolts, the steering, the reverse cables, um, well, you know, the bolts on the cables, and just remove the whole pump. You know, and it looks like this minus that bar across the screen. Um, that bar is actually another Bombardier tool to hold that drive shaft in place. So when you're putting the leverage on it, the drive shaft just doesn't slide out the back you know and it'll stay still and the floating ring will you can work it back you know sometimes it's got a little stick to it and you got to wiggle it and push on it and then the ring will finally push back um you know maybe you want to try to get that floating ring pushed back and that clip removed before you pull the pump out so you don't have to use this tool um it's a theory i unfortunately took it out ahead of time i ended up just counter sinking like a one inch hole in a four by four wood post about two foot long and uh, ratchet strapped it down tight up against this drive shaft and you know in this pump hole here you're staring at and it did the job it held it enough to get that floating ring to compress and get that out of there in just a couple of seconds you're going to see me talk about drive shaft replacements uh, i had to replace one of my drive shafts on this machine so when you're at this point and you got to pull the drive shaft out and you do regardless you know whether you're replacing the drive shaft and the the carbon ring or just the carbon ring setup you know you're still gonna have to yank this shaft out at some point if you're lucky you can get some hands around that shaft and just yank it out and you know it has a little bit of force friction to it so, you know holding it in um i've also seen videos and myself i had to make a little like tool that kind of just went over the drive shaft just enough to kind of hold it between the splines and the shaft there's a little indent there i cut a groove in a piece of wood that could slide in there and i was able to yank that wood hard enough to get that drive shaft to finally come loose um, i had to replace one and you'll see why in the just a couple of seconds Let's talk about the drive shaft. Um, one of my two units needed a new one. Um, I'll come in here together, you know, it looks like about like this. You can get a replacement on eBay aftermarket for about 200 bucks. And you're probably like, man, I'd really not have to spend that 200 bucks. However, having a spare drive shaft around isn't a bad idea because I cut mine off to make basically the tool Bombardier sells to hold your impeller in when you want to do an impeller rebuild. So, I mean, there I'd probably save 30 to 50 bucks on that tool by just using this old nasty drive shaft. Now, the reason I bought a new drive shaft is because on this end, I'm gonna put up one side of it real quick. But on this end, if I come in close enough, this is where the C-clip goes that holds the floating ring back. You know, so you have your floating ring, your carbon ring, your bellows boot, and your clothes clamps over it all. 
and then that C clip that C clip is what prevents it from just you know being loose. That provides the tension. Um, but if you really look in there, uh, you know it's really got pitted and rusted, and and this was as good as I could get it after a steel brush, you know, on a drill, just trying to smooth it out as best I could. I wasn't convinced that it was really going to hold water. There's a couple O-rings under that floating ring that also provide the water seal to keep the water out of the hull. Just had enough rust buildup that I just wasn't convinced it was going to do a good job. I mean, it's not smooth enough. I didn't even think the O-rings would hang in there. You know, so that's why I bought a new one. Um, and it turned out I could cut off the end and voila, I have an impella remover, removal tool as well for later in the videos. You'll see when I talk about that. When you're putting things back together, uh, this picture is a picture of the alignment sleeve going into the engine. This is where the drive shaft slides into the engine. Uh, pay note that that alignment sleeve should be flush with the outside of that sleeve, the rubber sleeve, uh, you know, dust cover basically. The next spot to take note of is on your drive shaft is a telltale line. So you're still looking at that alignment sleeve going into the engine and that drive shaft sliding in. The alignment or the the telltale line is still what a quarter inch out, maybe a little bit more. That's not inserted fully. It should be, you know, basically flush with that sleeve or even all the way in, as you'll see in the next picture. And see, here you have it. This will be the telltale line fully seated because you can't see it anymore. And now you're the drive shaft is fully seated and you're ready to move on to the next step which is most likely recompressing this floating ring and getting that c-clip back under there for your tension so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm not an expert this is just to show you the things that i had to do to get mine running i hope it's of use to you guys and gals and get you out on the lake or the ocean having a good time next up video number four that's superchargers you don't want to miss.